Welcome back to SportsRehabExpert.com. I'm Greg Shibley, and today we're going to be going over another review of a program. This program, we're going to actually compare two programs. I've reviewed Knees Over Toes Guy in the past, so be sure to check out that video if you haven't already. Um, but today we're also going to be covering PJF Performance uh, and a couple of his uh, training programs that he has available online. And we're just going to compare the two, PJ Performance versus knees over toes guy and uh, just give my opinion on the two different programs from a training perspective um, if you're looking for sports performance you know which program is there one that's better for you or is there not now before we get into the review i just want to mention that you know neither one of these guys have solicited both vert code paul ben knees over toes guy neither one of these guys have solicited my review of this um, this is simply just to try to help somebody make a decision um, I'm not getting paid anything from these programs. Uh, if you sign up for one or the other, I'm just trying to give you a little bit of an unbiased opinion on the information and the quality of the programs that both of these guys put out. Spoiler alert, both of these guys are great. They both put out great programs, but we're just trying to help you understand a little bit more of the value you're going to get behind each of these programs, depending on which one you choose to go for. Now, if you're watching this video, hoping to get some exact um, you know, what's included in the knees over toes program or what's included in the PGF performance vert code program. We're not going to include any of that simply because that would be doing a disservice to those guys and uh, the programs that they put out. Realize that both of these programs are very, very good. They have a lot of testimonials behind them and both of them are very useful from a longevity sports performance perspective. So I uh, have utmost respect for both of these guys um, and I'm not going to be giving away any of their material by any means. So if that is your goal from watching this video, then you can go ahead and stop watching right now. But if you'd like to know my perspective as a physical therapist and strength and conditioning coach, then I'm going to give my perspective on both of these programs and just give you a little bit better of an indication of what might be most useful for your given scenario. But then also from a rehab clinician side, what you should be able to pull from these type of programs to make yourself a better rehab clinician. Because those are the two concepts that SportsRehabExpert.com is all about, keeping you injury free and helping rehab clinicians become a better, more respected rehab clinician and strength coach in your respective areas. Now be sure to like, subscribe to the channel below, uh, and uh, comment with any type of reviews you'd like us to do in the future of different training programs, uh, other physical therapy and rehab training methodologies, uh, anything you'd like us to review in the future, uh, drop a comment below, or just hit that like button so we know that this video is something that you enjoy and it helps us create more content that is specific to you. So I'm going to start this review off actually with the similarity between the two. So in both of these programs, you're going to get some um, perspective on jump training and uh, the technique biomechanics associated with performing a one foot and two foot jump. Um, so that is something that I think is extremely useful for athletes to understand how to jump off of one leg, understand the mechanics behind a penultimate step, uh, understand how to transfer horizontal momentum into a vertical force that is super useful for an athlete to understand and be able to train. So both of these programs have a little bit of that in their training program, being able to teach you how to become technically proficient in vertical jump um, training, but then also, but also how to translate that action onto the basketball court or onto the field of play or whatever sport you may be training. Because in most sports, we have to learn how to transfer force, whether that's changing direction, whether that's going up for a dunk and jumping off of one leg, or moving horizontally and we're jumping vertically. There's different force vectors that are involved with that, and the ability to transfer force between these force vectors becomes extremely important um, for athleticism and as well as health perspective so you don't become injured or put yourself into a, a disadvantaged position. Now saying that, sports, you get yourself into awkward positions all the time, so you have to train your body to be able to withstand some of these forces in weird and awkward positions because the sport is unpredictable. So while I would like to say that you know in every given scenario you're going to be able to perform a one foot jump or a two foot jump in a very specific manner which is how you're going to be practicing it in a controlled environment which will aid in your ability to learn that skill but ultimately 
you have to develop some resiliency in your body to be able to withstand some awkward positions that you're going to just experience in the field of play and just the factor of, of um, you know, being involved in sport. So from a jump training perspective, I think you're going to get a lot of benefits out of both programs. I wouldn't necessarily say one is better than the other in this regard. Um, and from a rehab clinician standpoint, this is something that I think is often glanced over and missed a ton in the sports performance, sports rehabilitation side of things is actually understanding what goes on in that horizontal momentum, transferring it vertical when you're going through a one foot or two foot jump approach. Uh, I feel like a lot of strength and conditioning coaches and a lot of rehab coaches just rely on box jumps. And box jumps are just stationary objects. Uh, you're just jumping vertically onto a box. There's no transfer of horizontal momentum to a vertical force. There's no transfer of any type of force vector that is going on. And, and realistically, when we're looking at sport, we're transferring force in a variety of different force vectors all the time. And the ability to understand how to coach this effectively is extremely important. So that's something that you will learn by taking or, or signing up for either one of those training programs. You are going to learn how to effectively transfer force from a horizontal standpoint to a vertical standpoint when we're talking about a vertical training program. Um, so again, super useful for rehab clinicians. Again, we also go over a lot of these similar concepts as well as change of direction, vertical jump, um, and these concepts also in our sports rehab uh, expert courses, CU courses that are available for rehab clinicians and strength coaches online as well too. So if you're interested, feel free to check those out as well. These courses are approved for continuing education credits for physical therapists. Um, maybe eventually we'll get some strength coaches uh, approved for CEUs as well too and a variety of different um, accreditations that they have. That's part of the problem is there's so many different accreditations for um, strength coaches. So um, but strength coaches are welcome to jump on the course as well, too, if they find it interesting or intriguing. And if you've got any questions, feel free to email me at greg at sportsrehabexpert.com. Now, if you get into some of the differences um, between the training programs, um, you know, from an efficiency standpoint, from a time of uh, effort that you need to put into the workout, the knees over toes, guys, is very quick, short, right to the point. Get it done, get it over with. You're, you're not going to spend a ton of time during his workouts. You know, it might be 30 minutes to 45 minutes. PJF, you're going to be spending a little bit longer time. So there's going to be a little bit longer workouts. Not saying one's better than the other, but what is most uh, successful for people is what they can do repetitively. Um, so if time is a limiting factor for you, knees over toes, guys, probably is going to be a better option for you in that instance. His workouts are short, clean, straight to the point. Do what you need to do. Get in and get out. There's going to be a lot of other fluff. Fluff's probably a bad word. There's some useful uh, activities that are involved in some of the accessory work that is done in the other PJF performance programs, the vert code. Um, but again, it, it knees over toes, guys, a little bit more direct, more specific, straight to the point, get in and get out. Probably one of the biggest differences between the two programs from a vertical jump perspective um, is the type of lifts that are used too. Knees over toes guy is going to be taking you through a large range of motion. Um, PJF performance is going to have a little bit more specific to the joint angles involved with vertical jump. If we're talking about their vertical jump program. Um, so they're going to be doing more partial range of motions. It doesn't mean they also don't include full range of motion movements in their program, but they're going to put a little bit higher emphasis on some of these partial range of motions getting to joint angles specific to training um the vertical jump now again both are useful both have been shown to increase individuals vertical jump from a pure performance standpoint if you're looking to improve your vertical jump you know very very quickly in a short period of time you know getting to some of these joint angles are that are very specific to what you're going to be a, a countering in a vertical jump is very useful for improving your vertical jump in a short period of time so if you're, if you're looking to do this quickly PJF performance is probably the better option for you. It's, it's going to increase your vertical jump, and they do a good job of mixing in other things too that help keep your body resilient, feeling healthy. If we're looking at knees over toes guy, we're going to be looking at a little bit more full range of motion movements. Again, not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it will improve your vertical jump too, but you're probably not going to see um, a sharp spike in that vertical jump chaining right off the bat. And again, I would caution you in thinking that's a bad thing too, because a lot of times 
building a better base through a full range of motion, emphasizing full range of motion movements, and continually doing that over time, that's going to make small micro improvements to your vertical jump over an extended period of time. And if we're looking at year over year progression, in my opinion, a lot of the concepts that the Neo's Over Toes guy does is going to yield a little bit more longer term continuous results as opposed to with the PJF performance. You're going to do that, notice some quick results from it, but then you may also find yourself plateauing again too um, and becoming a little bit more stagnant in some of the lifts. This is not a knock on PJF performance. His goal of the vert code is to improve your vertical jump while keeping you healthy, and he accomplishes that. But it's also, you know, geared to improving your vertical jump very, very quickly in a short period of time, say anywhere from six to 12 weeks, noticing those type of changes. When you look at the knees over toes guy, again, he talks about it in his videos too, is that, you know, we want sustainable progress. So, you know, we don't want just a quick jolt of improvement in vertical jump, being able to take our vertical jump from, say, 24 inches to 30 inches. Um, that sharp increase in vertical jump can be super useful and can be super rewarding to experience that increase in vertical jump capabilities. But we also want to then take you to 32 inches, 34 inches, perhaps a 40 inch vertical if that's in the cards for you. And we need an approach that is a little bit more sustainable over time to be able to do that drastic of a change. And that's, again, what I think the system that Knees Over Toes guys created is a little bit more beneficial um, from that long-term uh, standpoint. You might not notice a very sharp increase in your vertical jump. Some people do. I'm sure he has plenty of testimonials that um, show a quick change in some of these vertical jump capabilities. Because honestly, a lot of times, we, when you make a short, quick change in the vertical jump um, capabilities, it, a lot of that comes back to your mechanics, technique, and skill of a vertical jump. So if you go from a 24-inch vertical to, say, like, you know, a 28-inch or a 30-inch vertical, and you do that in a matter of four to six weeks, there's not much physiological change that has happened to your tissue in that four to six weeks time frame. So if you're improving your vertical jump, likely what's making that improvement is a neurological stimulus, being able to recruit more motor units in a short period of time, uh, but then also uh, a technique standpoint. Again, I think technique's probably the fastest way for somebody to improve their vertical jump is just get back, getting better at performing a vertical jump. And simply by practicing it, you're going to get better. But through both of these systems, they're teaching you the skill behind jumping. So that's why you're going to notice that quick improvement. It's not necessarily from a physiological change that happens to your body in four to six weeks. It's because you got better at the skill of jumping and got the nervous system primed and ready for that movement by jumping more, but then also doing a lot of exercises that incorporate a high force output scenario. So again, when we're looking at the two programs, you have to take that into consideration is that, you know, number one, your first and foremost goal if you're trying to improve the vertical jump quickly is going to be skill. And both of these programs do that. So one is not necessarily better than the other in that regard. If we're looking for a little bit longer term, longer output, and being able to increase your strength over time with a variety of different movements and make your body more resilient, to a variety of these different positions. Again, in my personal opinion, Knees Over Toes Guys programs doing that a little bit better. Whereas when you look at the, the vert code, you're gonna see a particular set of lifts and those lifts really aren't going to change. The only thing that you can change within that lift is the load um, uh, that is applied with that lift. And again, that, that's not a bad thing. That's what a lot of programs do when you go to a strength and conditioning coach. Um, you know, the, the lift doesn't necessarily change. It's, the load that is done over that standpoint or that period of time. Now, if you sign up for a different program, then they're going to give you a different set of lifts. But then again, the only thing that it changes in this variable within that program is the actual uh, weight itself. Um, when you're looking at knees over toes guy, there's various different levels of uh, movements that you'll train. Um, and so depending on your current skill, current movement capabilities, you're going to pick a particular level of uh, an exercise or a depth or a range of motion, um, height of a box, pitch of a slant board. Um, like these, these are all variables that you can 
continually make improvements with. So it's not just load that you're adding into the equation where you can make improvement with. It's also depth, range of motion, manipulating your body weight into a different position that makes the exercise more challenging. So there's just, again, more built-in ways to create change over a period of time. And again, that's, that's it just, in my opinion, where uh, that knees over toes guys program is going to be a little bit more beneficial for people if we're looking for a longer term outcome. Now saying that too, again, knees over toes guys system is very direct to the point, get in and get out. Um, when we look at the vert code, you're going to have a lot of different various variations of plyometrics. Um, and I think the different variations of plyometrics that he, he utilizes is, uh, Paul utilizes is very useful too. Um, you know, the, the plyos that Ben uses is also very useful, but you're going to have a little bit more variety in your training when you look at the vert code. So again, people who like going to the gym, like going into the gym, like working out for a, an extended period of time, you know, nothing excessive by any means, you know, when we're talking like an hour, maybe a little bit more, depending on how quickly you go through the program. But, um, there's going to be a little bit more variety in the exercises that you, you have to choose from. Ben's knees over toes guys is going to be a little bit more direct again get in get out do these things over and over again repeated exposure over in a period of time and that's what's going to create your progress so if you feel like you just like having a little bit more variety in the gym vert code's probably a little bit more beneficial for you at that point in time just because it'll keep your stimulus up by giving you a variety of different exercises and a variety of different challenges to try to keep mastering but again the beauty behind knees over toes guy is you know, there's a set number of uh, lifts that you're going to be doing, but these lifts are very scalable from a beginner level to a very advanced level, and these lifts will evolve with you over time. So that's the beauty behind knees over toes guys system is the evolvement of a movement that happens over time. The beauty of PJF performance in the vert code is the the specificity behind the program to give you a quick change looking at these joint angles and specificity behind the joint angle necessary to improve your vertical jump and improve that neural stimulus. So uh, again, both are going to improve your vertical jump. If you're looking for a little bit more of a quicker jolt to your vertical jump while still staying healthy, PJF Performance Vert Code is probably a great option for you. If you're looking for a little bit more longevity, if you're dealing with a lot more variety of different injuries, injuries from a lower extremity standpoint, from you know, Achilles, ankle, knee, um, hip, you know, in, in progress, you want to keep making progress over time. Um, some of the things that knees over toes guy is preaching is going to be a little bit more effective for you, in my opinion. I wouldn't say that either program is bad for you or that you shouldn't do either. You, you know, feel free to do both. Both of them are very reasonable from a price perspective, too. You know, knees over toes guy is a, a subscription. You can cancel at any time. It's a little bit cheaper entry price point, but you're going to have to keep paying as you go over time. Vert code, it's a one-time fee, still very reasonable from a pricing perspective. Um, but once you have a program, you have the program for life, and you can keep coming back to it as you please. So, you know, honestly, the best thing might be challenging yourself with both of these programs to a certain extent. And just realize, uh, you know, depending on how you respond to it, you're going to make be able to make an educated decision based upon your body yourself, which program you respond to better. To give you a summary behind what I think is the difference between the two, both of them are going to teach you how to um, train the vertical jump and develop the skill of vertical jump capabilities. Um, Knees over toes guy does it a very unique way from, you know, giving you about four or five different jumps and also teaching you to, to, to develop some jump symmetry between left and right, which I think is very, very useful. Um, PJF performance, uh, they're going to give you a more variety of different plyometrics to choose from, um, which is also a good thing. Keeps you, keeps you stimulated, keeps you um, trying to get better at different types of plyometrics, which can be useful. Uh, these plyometrics are going to be very specific to the joint angles that help get you a higher vertical jump. Um, they're also going to teach you the skill behind vertical jump um, technique. But from my perspective, um, it, there doesn't seem to be quite as much emphasis on um, developing jump symmetry, left and right approaches, you know, approaching the, the jump from both sides. Knees over toes guys very big on jump symmetry. So, uh, again, I, I think if you're trying to increase your vertical and, and do so in a very specific manner, uh, you know, the, the vert code is probably going to be the most beneficial for you. If you're looking for 
health longevity and you're developing a lot of pain and problems um, behind all the jumping that you're doing, knees over toes guy and, and talking about the jump symmetry, that's going to be more beneficial for you there to keep you healthy um, and developing both plant legs um, to a symmetrical degree, um, which also is, is very useful in the field and court play because, you know, when you play basketball, you're going to be exposed to a variety of different plant legs and you need to be able to jump off of both legs. So again, positives to both, it's just kind of what you want to, where you want to take your training. From a workout standpoint, a little bit more variety in the vert code, a little bit more do the same thing over and over again in the knees over toes guy system. Neither's right nor wrong. Some of it's depending on what you can do on a consistent basis. Knees over toes guy is going to be a little bit more efficient. Get in and get out. Knees over toes guy Ben is going to emphasize more full range of motion. PJF performance is going to emphasize more specific joint angles um, involved with vertical jump while still also taking you through a full range of motion, just not quite the same emphasis that knees over toes guy has with it. Again, if you're looking for quick changes, probably the PJF performance is going to be better for you. If you're looking for longer term outcomes, if you're looking for a more continuous improvement, then the knees over toes guy probably going to be the better option for you. But as I've said before, both approaches are not bad and having a mixture of the two certainly could be useful for you as well. And, you know, adding the variety and having that, you know, short term stimulus of a lot more specificity followed by a lot more general physical capability in the knees over toes guys program and mixing and matching between the two is certainly useful but just keep in mind that you know with anything you're going to have to have exposure over time so you can't just keep jumping from these programs back and forth you know if you're, if you're going through ben's program you need to go through his program at least you know he he champions 12 weeks you know realistically six weeks probably enough to make some changes and then he has three programs so six weeks of each of them to 12 weeks of each of them if you're trying to get any type of change you need to be able to spend that much time on a program and not push yourself too quickly through that program vert code doesn't have three different programs that you're working through it's just one program but again you need to be doing that for six to 12 weeks to be able to see any type of long-term change occur or actual physical adaptation to occur to your body and physical adaptation is what we're looking for. We're also looking for skill improvement, coordination, movement, efficiency improvement as well. So all of these programs are going to do that. You just have to stick to that program for a long enough period of time to actually see changes and realize that the changes you see early are going to be more neurological and skill based when you're, when you're talking about practicing jumping and learning the skill of jumping. So it's okay to program hop, but you need to, again, make sure you're on that program for a lengthy period of time necessary for you to actually see the full benefit of that program. And if you have any other questions about these programs and which one might be better for you for your given scenario, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll give you my advice on it. But again, I'm not going to hand out what these guys are doing specifically. Um, you can do your own research. I'm sure you're probably actually following those two guys if you're looking for an opinion on it. Likely, if you're coming to this channel, you probably follow both of those guys, if not one or the other. Um, you've done your research, but you're just looking for some other guy's perspective on the object. You're just looking for some other physical therapist or some other strength coach's perspective on the two programs. Um, and I hope this was helpful for you to uh, make a decision on which program might be more beneficial for you or which program you may want to start out with. If you're still unsure, feel free to drop some questions in the comments below, and I'll try to help you out best that I can.